Hey there, it's Boots Owen here. I'm going to have a look inside this Gainsborough E550 vintage electric shower. Uh, it's missing the knob here that would have been on it, but uh, that would just be a flow regulating knob. And it has a high low power switch there. So the knob goes down from stop, min, and max. And it'll all become clear when we look into it. Let's have a look at what's inside. Now I quite like this one. I'm not going to use it again. It's going to go in the scrap, but I thought I'd take it apart and have a look at it. So inside, it's all really, really simple. You've got water coming in through this pipe. I've loosened off a lot of the stuff in here so that I can take it apart. And you've got water coming out through a shower head here. So let's get rid of that first of all. That was the old shower head held on with sellotape and a pretty chintzy plastic one, probably not original. Gainsborough is an okay brand as far as I know, but I don't know. I don't know anything about them really. So, having a look at it, you've got your electricity coming in here and your water coming in here. So electricity comes in, red wire is live, black is neutral, green is earth. And given that it's red and black, this is quite an old machine. I guess you're getting into at least the 90s, maybe the 80s. I don't see any numbers on it, although, let's have a look, there's a plate in here. So maybe someone could tell from the serial number or the product code there what's going on. But I don't know, it's not for me. So the live comes in and it goes straight up here to this thermal fuse on top. Then out of the thermal fuse in two cables down to the back of this switch. So there's two micro switches here. And they're both off this little pressure switch, I guess it is. The switch is in the micro switch and the pressure comes in here. So once you open this up, they must click on. Then you get live, so it'll only work if there's water pressure going to the water, water pressure. Oh, that pipe's just come off. That's a, a kind of a, a blow-off pipe there, I think. I wonder, can I unscrew that? No, that's just clips on there. Okay, so water pressure switch, and then the power comes through the brown and through a red. So one red goes up to the element over here on the right. So this is your low element. I'm guessing here and here, black and uh, red and then your high element is through this high low switch here which as you'll recall off the front high and low all that does is it just has a little a little uh, nub on the inside of the switch there and it activates this rocker switch so a very simple arrangement there and that does the other element on that side so it's all loose let's get this apart there's a brass strip now solid brass has a strip to hold that um, the little boiler on Amazing, you wouldn't see brass in any of the modern showers. And then let's just have a look in here, I've loosened this off. Let's have a look into this faucet flow regulator. It's just a tap. So you've got water coming up. You've got water coming up from the center and then going through this little hole here and activating this pressure. What was coming up, it's going down here and up here. So it activate, activates this pressure switch. You might tear that apart and then goes on up here to the boiler in the bottom. So, can I get this out? I've loosened this one off. Take that off, and the only thing that's left connected is this switch. Switch just clip out like that. Now, I don't want this machine, and I don't want to keep it, so I'm just going to scrap it, basically. But I'm not so much interested in the scrap element of this as I am interested in the how it works element. And the quality of construction, really, because you're looking at a lot of solid brass and a lot of brazed, or, well, it's soldered rather than brazed copper here. And all mechanically, you know, screwed together, whereas on a modern one, it would all be clipped together. So there we go. Let's get in here on top. Brass screws, and there's your thermal switch. That's a resettable, resettable one. And you remember one of my first shower videos was of a red ring shower. And that red ring shower was just, I think it was red ring, awful. And the thermal switch kept tripping because of the way it turned off. You could turn off the water, but the boiler element would keep running. And it was just a disaster. Whereas, well, this one, I don't know if the same thing could happen in here, but uh, I presume it hasn't happened. I'm looking for a date code. I don't see it. Well, none of those stand out as a date code. 10th of the 1st, 0530. So that doesn't really help me. So no date code there. On this one, ah, there we go. That's more modern than I thought. Okay, week 35, year 2000. On that little micro switch. There you go, okay. That's not, it's not so old, really. Let's pull these off. 
I don't know that there's very much more to show you then. Um, we've looked at the... I'd like to get in here actually and try and see this. So this is a blow-off switch, a blow-off um, valve. So if there's too, ooh, a bit of water there. So if there's too much pressure in the unit, it'll blow out here. And patent pending. Wondering if I can get in there. I could probably just like break it off because I don't really care, but it doesn't. Well, I learned something. There we go. So that's just that's just a snap-on top. And then in here, that's just a diverter that's held on. With a little keyring clip kind of thing there. So this should lift up. Yeah, and that's it. So I guess this just blows off inside if it's got too much pressure. Um, I don't know what it does. It must it must just open like that or something. If there's too much pressure. And I guess that's not resettable. These are all soldered, so there's not much. I can't, like, I could open this with a tin opener or a screwdriver, but all you're going to see in there is two curly whirly elements, one inside another. So it's just basically a little kettle. But I just thought it was quite neat. Like, it's smaller than most of the modern ones. It's weird, that cable seems to be. Oh no, it's not. Okay, it was just. It's just uh, corroded and into place there and then let's see if i can get into this micro switch so there's a little there we go so that's it open now let's have a look in here so that's just holding the pipe in place so there must be a pressure switch in here so if you can hear this clicking this is me blowing into it Oh, it takes a it takes a good deal of pressure. Let's try that on a bicycle pump. There's the gauge, and I think if I put that into a Schrader valve holder, it should it should work. So let's have a look at this. Try and get this in line with the camera. There we go. Okay, it's actually very little pressure. Oh wow. Okay, so if we look at that, you can actually see it happening as well. See the red beam plunges out there. So there must be a diaphragm. Pushing that big red button out. That's really cool. Onto the um, onto the two micro switches, and it activates both of them, and that activates both the elements. That's pretty cool. Okay, so as long as there's water pressure, that'll work. I'm kind of that's kind of interesting. I kind of like that. Okay, so let's break this down. A couple of micro switches. Let's just try and get in here. That's one, and that's two. I'm surprised that this is only 20 years old, because, well, I don't know why really, like, I don't know what I expected. There's little insulators there, so that none of this gets electric on it. But all of the metal parts were earthed as well, through the, through the earthing sleeve onto the top of the boiler, and because the rest of it's metal, it's all earthed. Two micro switches. I hang onto these things because they're handy for projects, but I say that, and I've got a whole box of 100 of them, and I don't know if I've ever used two of them. Micro switches, anyways. And then this is more likely to get used, and I'll actually keep it in this configuration, this little rocker switch with the spade connectors on it. And if you've ever seen my videos of destroying washing machines, you'll know that spade connectors, a spade connector on each end of a loop of wire like that is useful for wiring or hot wiring a washing machine universal motor. So if there's anything left to discover in here, wires, this little switch, I think that's really getting really neat. A little diaphragm switch there. Well, it's not a diaphragm switch anymore. It's just a piece of metal. Okay. Pretty cool, that. There you go. That was a Gainsborough E550 shower. Excellent. Thanks for watching. Any questions or comments, leave them below. See you later.